Welcome to Mind Flow Radio. We are creating conscious community by sharing mindful manifesting skills and transcendental music. We are all in this together. I see modes of fixed explanation lost on the way to a happy destination slumped and sitting on the bench of despair clicking through channels escaping the care lots of excuses why actions don't matter meanwhile the masses give in to the chatter Motionless accepting the rhetoric that's fed Things that are rigged get covered by what's said Go for a walk and breathe in fresh air Turn off the screen, find a reason to care Commit to your body and realize the challenge Observe the solution, rest in healthy action We want to believe in the goodness of all But some people really hold us down to feel small How can we find the strength to jump back in? Breathing in, moving, feel I function again Forget about the losses, oppressions, and judgments Long enough to find the hope in existence Stand up and speak up, feel everything you can No labels or agenda, open up to the plan Go for a walk and breathe in fresh air Turn off the screen, find a reason to care Commit to your body and realize the challenge Observe the solution, rest in healthy action So many reasons to give in or give up Feeling like someone else knocked over your cup just want to escape into a fantasy forget about the aging painful reality if you don't use it you lose it that's true to maintain well-being well get up and move find a community that understands no need to be alone in any circumstance Go for a walk and breathe in fresh air Turn off the screen, find a reason to care Commit to your body and realize the challenge Observe the solution, rest in healthy Mindflow Radio. Mindflow Radio. Here we are. Yeah, we made it. The eternal <laughs> present moment. Yep. He's Monty. She's Jalen. We have Aaron here with us for our monthly chat. Hi, Aaron. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for having me. Wow. Making soup for me. Yeah, it was yeah. really yummy. Good. Yeah. <laughs> So what do we have? What do we have? Well, we have the Tao Te Ching again. All right. And uh, we're on chapter seven or verse seven. Oh, okay. Um, and I can read it. And it starts, heaven and earth last forever. The reason that heaven and earth are able to last forever is because they do not give birth to themselves. Therefore, they are always alive. Hence, the sage puts herself last and is first she is outside herself and therefore herself lasts. It is oh. not through her selflessness that she is able to perfect herself. Or, sorry, is it not through her selflessness that she is able to perfect herself? Hmm. 
So that's verse seven. What strikes me is just that line of she is outside herself. Right. Therefore, Observing. yeah, not, not like ego driven, mm -hmm. like the rest of us, perhaps, mm -hmm. or most of us. Yeah. Yeah. You I know. think it was, that's interesting. Cause I just, as a perspective, right. I heard if you're outside of yourself, that you're kind of disembodied. Well, it depends how you look at it. Yeah. I don't think they mean it that way. Right. Yeah. I think they mean, you know, not. I think a mindful ego, observer instead it's of probably of the ego fits and, and, better. <laughs> yeah, and, and to be of service to others, and then to advance your soul, right? Yeah. To continue to serve, continue to serve, which is tricky because you got to balance the serving others and serving yourself. Right. Right, because you can give too much. You can right. deplete yourself and be. Yeah, at I don't zero. like the word selfless. I. Right. I yeah, that doesn't resonate liked, with me. Yeah, either. me neither. More just service to others. Yeah. In service. And yourself. In service to self and others. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, in reality, I think when we, we serve others, we are serving ourselves too, because mm -hmm. we're helping our own karma. Mm -hmm. As long as we're you not know? depleting ourselves. Because there's, I mean, yeah. there are swaths of people that are helpers, but they... And you might be able to relate to this. So you give to the point where you're just completely right. drained and it's like, well, what do I do? And then you crash, mm -hmm. sleep for days. Yeah. Yeah. Caregiver burnout. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. And I think, yeah, we experience it, you know, in healthcare all the time with, um, especially, you know, men too, but moms, right? So you mm -hmm. go to work and you're, you're helping others, you're solving their problems, you're listening yeah. to their problems, you're, you're kind of having empathy and then you go home and you do it for <laughs> your kids. Why are there so many dirty dishes? Yeah. Oh, right. Well, yeah. Then you do it for your kids unless you're worn out and then right. you take it out on the kids. And eventually you get worn out. <laughs> yeah. Right. You go and you do it for your kids and you're still selfless and you're serving them and you're helping them. And then eventually, yeah. like you said, you crash. Yeah. And so that's where, you know, time comes in where you just have to have time for self. Right. So that you can have time for others. Mm -hmm. It's balancing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and one, another way of looking at being outside of yourself, it's sort of like, I think what they're getting to perhaps is identifying with the, the, the big, well, in Zen they call it the big ego, the mm -hmm. ego that represents our right. spiritual self mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. rather mm -hmm. than, isn't well, that interesting? Yeah. Well, there's a little ego that represents our just like this body and here I am right you know, and I'll be around for 80 years, mm -hmm. whatever the little ego, the big ego represents the, the soulful self, which is going to be around probably a lot longer. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, mm -hmm. who knows how long, Forever. maybe perhaps, yeah. who knows? Yeah. And, um, so the big ego is called Taiga. In Zen, mm -hmm. and the little ego is called Shoga, mm -hmm. I think. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and so the big ego is is good. Yeah, the big ego is you're, you're looking at life through a soulful perspective. Yeah. Okay. Essentially. Oh, I yeah. like that because it allows yeah. you to have an ego, right? Yeah, it you does. You have to have it a does. healthy ego. Yeah. Well, it's... Right. It's yeah, I mean, the, important. the little ego is important mm -hmm. too, but we just, mm -hmm. the little ego is not supposed to be the CEO right. of your life. Right. Mm -hmm. Essentially, if the big ego can be the CEO, mm -hmm. the little ego can be kind of like the middle manager. Yeah. The COO. Just the operations, right? <laughs> oh, Managing the operation. Yeah. Cool. Cool for short. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Operating it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind if I check that out? Yeah. I read it earlier too, and I'm just like, mm -hmm. well, we need to get our hands on another translation too. Yeah, yeah, and I have mine, and I, I just moved everyone, so I lost it and it's oh. lost in the <laughs> shuffle. <laughs> that, that I only had room happened. for so many books on my shelf. Yeah, I've always liked Stefan Mitchell's. Um, yeah, we haven't checked that one out really at all. Yeah. Um. Okay. Heaven and Earth last forever. <laughs> how I think you know when I did I feel like such a skeptic today. I'm like, but it, how does the Earth last forever? Well, it doesn't. Obviously, I, I thought <laughs> that too. I mean, it doesn't but last maybe forever. It, but maybe the but, eternal present is all we have too. So, from that perspective, the Earth is 
But who knows? Yeah. I mean, physical it, earth. Yeah. In, in billions and billions of years, the earth is not going to be here mm -hmm. if there is such a thing as a future. But then there may be some other, right? I mean, maybe right. there's and another place, earth, maybe. another place, yeah, another that's true. humanity, another. Uh, Which kind of gets down to the, the point that as far as reality goes, we really don't know what's going no. on. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. This is all we know. Yeah, yeah. We, we really don't have it. We can pretend like we know. <laughs> right. I think they're yeah. implying, though, that the heaven and earth are eternal because they're there to serve us. Mm. They're there to, you know, you could imagine heaven's there to serve our soul and the earth is there to serve our body. Hmm. And that's okay. how and, and kind of like the selfless mother who's just there to serve and that creates an eternal quality to them. And I was thinking about yeah, like huh. when we've talked about uh, evolving or awakening before and when you get to the top of the soul, Oh, go back and serve. Oh, you know, right. and that's, mm -hmm. that's what all the enlightened. The yeah. Yeah. Now go back and serve. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's what the earth and heaven do. Right. They just continue to serve. Mm hmm. Yeah. And you did a little research before you came today. A little. Yeah, I Googled yeah. it. <laughs> what what was it again? I can't remember. Like the Just what I said, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um so I think my mind just gets really boggled and I'm thinking at the same time as I'm hearing, so maybe mm -hmm. I didn't hear everything, but this idea of she puts herself last and therefore is first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, it's just and I think so it's interesting. She's observing. Okay. You know, so she, she's she not is becoming wise and, and becoming sage because she's just putting herself last and watching mm -hmm. and, and kind of observing. And, and then you can imagine she's probably observing her own thoughts as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and just this kind of state of, mindfulness yeah, mm -hmm. right. by being a Presence, mindful observer present, right not worrying about the past not concerned about the future yeah I, there's a leadership uh maybe ted talk or something too that talks about or a book that talks about you know the um why are the best leaders always the last to eat or drink or do anything to take care of themselves huh. and I don't know. I don't remember what it's all about, but I thought about that too. That's like, so interesting. Mm, that the le best leaders serve themselves last. <laughs> Sounds like it's painful, then. right? Dang. I, was, I don't know we, if that's we always We just all had either. soup no. together and well, I served myself first and yeah. said, here's the bowls. And yeah. That's really interesting. Uh -huh. Dang it. Okay. <laughs> I'll try to be More better. Work to do. <laughs> that means I get to eat first now. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Yeah. So well, we do. Let's talk about leaders a little while. Yeah. You know, because that's one thing I've just been listening to this Tulsi Gabbard podcast. Mm -hmm. And she's talking about how we really need great leaders mm -hmm. and how the politicians just are not cut out of that cloth necessarily mm -hmm. you know for whatever reason they're propped up to be the the so-called leaders but they're not great leaders because in a sense according to Tulsi they're like really emotionally immature mm -hmm. and just um I don't know to me it just popular. yeah well and just caught in their way it's like high school she says right. it's just like high congress is like high school and Everybody goes in their little cliques in the room and they all hang yeah, out. and They're silos. Pointing yeah, at each other. Yeah, right. And, <laughs> and um, she taught, the way I see it, I mean, the, the, the leaders are immature. And, but in a sense, though, they're a real reflection of the masses mm -hmm. who are also immature. Mm -hmm. So that's really the key for us to Evolve. evolve yeah is to find a level of maturity and what does that mean mm -hmm. right you know part of that is not being as selfish mm -hmm. like little right. kids are selfish mm -hmm. a little three-year-old self i want right. that toy i want that toy mm -hmm. yeah right mm -hmm. yeah even my 13 year old i had a conversation with him about how he kind of said and this was a little scary but i don't care about anybody else mm. i can't help yeah. anybody else i can't control anybody else i'm just care about myself so 
if you're upset, mom, that's your thing. I mean, <laughs> it's not me. And, and I, and that's I talked to him in a way, it is in a way. And so I started to just uh. sit back and listen and it's true. Like he's just present. And, um, but there's the ego. And I reminded him at that time, like, but remember you're egocentric right now. Like you, you're, yeah. your <laughs> yeah. frontal lobe isn't developed and just be open to more possibilities later in life. You yeah, know, mm, that you might true. care about other people's feelings or emotions or. Well, and essentially we're all, we're all selfish from the perspective that, this is what we, this is the way we view life yeah. through our own eyes, right? And our own mind processes the information, mm -hmm. we so we're all there. Yeah, right. We have our own past that laces the present, right. with its own flavor. Exactly. We all have our our own traumas mm -hmm. and our own like mistakes we've made, and mm -hmm. I think really the idea of being mature, of finding that level of maturity, is to. Number one, take responsibility right. mm -hmm. for ourselves, in our lives, in mm. our thoughts. Mm -hmm. And observe them. Right? Mm -hmm. Pay attention. Well, more than observe, even like uh, mm -hmm. um, steer Shift them. Em. Steer mm -hmm. them when, when we find ourselves yeah. blaming others for whatever mm -hmm. or hating other mm -hmm. people or mm -hmm. not being compassionate towards like millions of people. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, we, have, we need to like identify that in our own minds and then change it. And then find that compassion for others. Mm -hmm. And in, as a result, uh, a pleasant result of finding compassion for others is we're more compassionate to ourselves as well. Because mm -hmm. our minds are getting into that habit of compassion rather than blame. Right. And the reality is, is if I go around blaming others for all my problems. Nothing th will ever change. Well, nothing will ever change. And then when I make a mistake, bam, I'm blaming myself. I'm hating on myself. Mm -hmm. And then I'm really caught in this cycle that just like crushes my self-esteem. Yeah. Right. So I want to escape from that. So I'll blame others because my self is, I mean, it's just this mm -hmm. horrible like cycle of immaturity. Right. That is so common. So I wonder if leaders, politicians, yeah. school systems, you know, start teaching emotional intelligence. Cause that's mm, what this is, is so emotional great. intelligence <laughs> and, and just the awareness of, of being able to change your thoughts, change your, your reactions and, yeah. and the way you see things. And it reminded me when you're talking and I'm thinking about political leaders and, yeah. and, um, I read Michelle Obama's book becoming, I don't know, quite a while ago, yeah. but she talks about Barack and, and how, and when they were in their thirties or sometime earlier in their marriage, when a lot of marriages were falling apart, mm -hmm. she said, you know, I, I didn't know what was happening. And then I, I kind of reflected like, why are, why are we okay? And she said it was because he was already there. Mm. Like, and, and she was implying that he already had the emotional intelligence to kind of be Love present it. with her mm -hmm. and, and to be in a relationship where other marriages at that part, at that point, were just kind of falling apart mm -hmm. because they didn't have yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, it's growing at the same pace. Right. <laughs> right. Being open to each other's learning and yeah. Being a team, right. That's, that's the key to a healthy relationship. I serving believe. others. It goes back. I mean, it ties right back into what we read, you well, know, yeah. serving others and, mm -hmm. and not just yourself. Yeah. And, there is a piece that I want to go back to when you're talking about your son and not caring. And I think there's a level of detachment there that we all need. And it's something that I can't remember getting before a couple of years yeah. ago to try mm -hmm. not to care mm -hmm. about somebody's feelings mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. you know, will or I be approved of? Or? Am I enough? Cause they just like, made a funny look at me and maybe I'm not like mm -hmm. cool enough to hang out with them very you know like in the high school gym or cafeteria but that level of detachment with service right. as a 13 year old right, right. I and mean, that is that is right. good it's like it's like the serenity prayer kind of too right. yeah right totally. like accepting the things that yeah, I can't change totally yep. acceptance mm -hmm. is so important mm -hmm. you know and just uh, Oh, detachment. Oh, it's like neutrality. Yeah. Viewing the world through a neutral yeah. lens. And I can't really change this. So, but we can, but we can change our own vibration, but even yeah. so you can't change your vibration if it's meant to seek approval from others. If right. it's meant 
to, well, yeah, gain popularity. That's the same thing. Or meant to make a bunch of money or whatever. If your intention is out of some kind of a greed, a desire. Right. For fame. For for fame or fortune. Popularity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's kind of what he was saying. He's like, you know, I don't care. Like, and I, I liken it to the smiling, even though you just force yourself to smile. No, you're super often. uncomfortable, but you want people to like you and think that you're yeah. nice and kind and friendly. Yeah. So you just smile mm-hmm. yeah. and, and he won't. I mean, I could challenge him and say, just, just do it, Warren, just yeah. pretend. And he'll he like, smiles at me. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He will. If you really force him. I think that's just cause I'm always smiling, yeah. which is something that I learned. Right. And if you, but it, and then it's a good thing too. Like if you smile, if you walk be. into a room smiling or like you've talked Monty about, well, if I go into quick trip and I just yeah. am kind of present and I'm kind and I'm, yeah. you know, engage with somebody, the yeah. whole mm-hmm. place kind of shifts. Yeah. Everybody and, can feel it. Sort right. Of. So there's, mm-hmm. it's just a balance, right? Yeah. It, and it's knowing when. And I think it's like the three pronged stool and without one of the legs, you fall over. Mm. So there's the detachment, the acceptance and the compassion. Maybe. I don't know. Actually, I just came up with that in my head right now. But detachment. Mm -hmm. I think detachment is super key. Well, detachment, too. You look at it's like having that neutral, detached perspective. That is being mindful, Mm -hmm. essentially, because I'm not. putting a judgment on things. Mm-hmm. I'm just noticing, I'm trying to notice all the variables. Mm-hmm. And the only way to notice all the variables is to just be open and clear minded mm-hmm. and not put my own spin on it. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I think this actually ties into the verse mm-hmm. because it says to, um, that she puts herself last mm-hmm. and ends up first. And it's, if you're detached and you're not in a race and you're not trying to get there because you know, there's right. going to be enough for you when you get there then yeah you're right you're not all attached out. to the outcome well and then yeah. you've won yeah, yeah. And then you've won absolutely and, and then you get it you get the prize of good energy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? yeah and yeah. then you walk into quick trip and everybody feels it you know? <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. ideally mm-hmm. on a good day that is right yeah, yeah. i mean sometimes <laughs> it's out of your control of course but most yeah. often and like i talked about before too, you know, you, you show up to work and, and you just present yourself in that way and you're consistent and, and eventually yeah. others, uh, it, it just naturally happens, right? Mm-hmm. You vibrate that energy mm-hmm. yeah. and then all of a sudden the, <clears throat> your team is kind of vibrating a little higher. It's true. Mm-hmm. It's true. I, mm-hmm. I look at groups of people as just like, um, it's almost like the dominant energy rules. No matter what right. that is, no matter what it is. Mm-hmm. I was in a room of people once and I saw a dog get angry and then like spread to the entire room. Mm-hmm. I was, <laughs> and I, I'm the one who made the dog angry, actually. <laughs> so I tried and picked it up by a scruff of its neck and it, its neck and I'm like, and then everybody starts getting, and then everybody starts arguing with each other. Wow. And I was like, all oh, that anger spread from that dog to everybody. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And I just like observed it. I was like, huh? <laughs> wow, I did that. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I created that. Uh-huh. Huh. Uh-huh. That's, That's funny. interesting. Yeah. It's true. You know, and uh, it reminds me of Dr. DeLine telling me once that you're only as happy as your saddest child. You know, you'll only ever be as happy as your saddest child. And that's the energy, right? And, and, yeah. and the energy of your tribe, the energy of your house, the energy, yeah. it spreads. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. The energy of your community. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel the energy of this community. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How lucky. Right when I drove, first time ever I drove into this town, I felt it. I was like, it felt like home to me. It was really, nice. yeah. I was like, cool. this feels like home. I was like, Today? home. <laughs> no, the oh. first time ever I came to. Oh, the first time you came to Viroqua. Yeah. Mine was the same. Yeah. Cool. I just felt it. It felt like the next home because I've never felt at home anywhere. So I think that's part of my desire to run Your away journey. all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, yes, when I came here, I was like, oh, mm-hmm. what is this feeling I have? I like this town. And we hear that a lot. You know, we have friends mm-hmm. who yeah. who just kind of show up and they're like, wow, 
this place is amazing. Mm -hmm. Jeremy. (laughs) Thank you, Jeremy, for Uh being here. Yeah. (laughs) His energy just brought and just spun him into the area somehow. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> oh, right. so it was all mutual. It was just like it's the collective yeah. magnetic kind of draw the thing. team together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, the team, the tribe, yeah. the, the tribe. tribe. Then you know you Thrive wonder, tribe. How do we r- maintain balance, though? You know, without getting um, <clears throat> the polarity, right? So mm. we've got this great community. It's yeah. wonderful. We're we're evolving. We're doing all sorts of good work. Yeah how do we live together in harmony I think, with everyone? I think that's it. I mean, we have to achieve a level of maturity, right? You know, and not all of us are going to be mature and not, not mature all the time either. Right. Yeah. Respecting each other for sure, which is you take that a step back, just being compassionate towards each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then again, like I said, we're compassionate towards ourselves. Then we're feeling better. Our self-esteem goes up and mm-hmm. it just, it's this cycle of, it's a spiral. And that's, that's, um, yeah, you know, it's interesting speaking about maturity, you know, we're talking about like how schools should teach Mm -hmm. emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. Think of it. They kind of do in a sense. It's like, there's been this big, huge push in schools over the last 10 years of no bullying, Mm -hmm. no bullying, no bullying, no bullying, no bullying. And then you look at like Facebook and everybody's bullying each other. (laughs) All these adults. All the adults are. (laughs) I know. I'm like, whoa. You're acting like children. I mean, I've been a part of it. I'm not saying I'm like above that, Mm -hmm. but I do notice it. Mm -hmm. I do notice it. And um, it's time we really took a hard look at that. Right. And that it's one thing I've been noticing on Facebook recently is that when I call people out, it's like, Hey, why are you name calling? Mm -hmm. People are like, huh? They kind of like, it takes them aback. Yeah. So it's like, Oh, good. Yeah. It feels like people are ready to hear this. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's good. It's been happening else. so much in the last year. I think people yeah. are just tired of it. Right. Cause well, they real out and you get trained too. There's just, well, yeah, a, it's terrible. A draining. Field well, you're calling it's vampiric. It's very vampiric. Well, and it, it gets reflected back no matter right, what, if I'm calling back. somebody a name, that's, you know, it's just, it's this back and forth, mm-hmm. like, emotional warfare that like toddlers i mean <laughs> like it's fourth graders are like don't call them a name name calling's not you know and blah blah right. blah and then all the adults not all the adults but a large but percentage a big percentage mm-hmm. of adults are like highly engaging in that just immature place mm-hmm. and so i want to go back a little bit <laughs> <laughs> to the idea of how do we maintain the tribe Mm -hmm. and one thing that i've been pondering Mm -hmm. lately is this idea of if you aren't polar then there's no polarity Mm -hmm. so it's kind of just seeing the god spark in everyone or having respect or knowing that everyone has their own past and present. And so they're going to have their own perspectives. And if we could just honor each other and not get excited when we feel like they've been uh, saying something bad about us to give people the benefit of the doubt that maybe they're just dealing with their own thing. Like the more we remove ourselves from that polarity, the more that we are a part of removing polarity. Yeah. 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 And just give people grace. Right. I mean, yeah. give them grace for their path and, oh yeah, and, and allow it. Yeah. I, I've talked with people recently where they were kind of venting about something somebody had di- done or explaining it. And I said, you just got to give grace. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, that mm-hmm. give yeah. grace that they're right where they're supposed to be and doing the best they can. Right. Totally. Right. And, and we're not going to change anyone's got. mind when, yeah. when we're accusing them of being bad. Right. As soon no. as you, right. s- you go up to somebody and s- tell them they're bad, they're immediately shackles up, yeah. shield up or, or stupid. on the defense. Right. Or idiot. Yeah. That's like a the common name. term. I, it it's so idiot. bizarre to me. I had <laughs> posted something on Facebook, <laughs> one of my most maybe radical posts. Yeah. And, and it's funny when you do that, you don't get much 
you don't get much feedback, uh, you know, yeah. it's something that's really a little uh, bit beyond what you normally do. And, yeah. um, but I did get feedback from one person that's really close to me and I was called an idiot. And, yeah. oh, and wow. I was like, Oh, well, I don't know about that. Like, I'm not sure why you're calling me an idiot. There's yeah, nothing right. new here. There's no new thoughts, no new opinions. Yeah. <laughs> it's still me. Well, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's really yeah. interesting. But how do we remove ourselves from that feeling that we get when we read somebody called us an idiot? Right. Well, I just and how still often would they even love say that, that to right? your face? I mean, for me, I mean, the out. relationship, I call it out. Yeah. I say, oh, you know, that just doesn't resonate with me. And yeah, what's and, with the name calling? Yeah, and then maybe I even fall apart and call some names back or yeah. <laughs> say some. Yeah. expletives because I feel safe, right? It's somebody I'm safe yeah. enough yeah, with yeah. that I can do that. Yeah. And then, you know, we come back to accepting, mm -hmm. you know, accepting that, that we're, we have our own opinions and right. ideas about well, it. And another, mm -hmm. another aspect of maturity is, is a sense of humility, mm -hmm. I believe. And just like no, knowing that started. maybe, you know, I have my opinion about things, but mm -hmm. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. I mean, there's not much That's of what that. I did. For there's, a couple of days, yeah. I was like, I reflected that there, and I even thought of other ideas, other, other stories I could create about, and, and it was a, a post about race and other stories I could create about the system. And, and so it is, it's being open to mm -hmm. yeah. other ideas. Well, and that's what's mm -hmm. lacking too with, with a lot of people is there, they just, there's no humility. There's no question in their mind whether they know the truth or not. They're, they are locked in to this little narrative. It's like this little box in their mind. Yeah. And anybody that's outside that box is, a, is, a, is a, some kind of name, is an idiot or whatever. Right. But there's, there's, there's no questioning. It's like, huh, maybe, maybe I don't know all right. of what's going on. Right. I mean, and so I, I just see people engaging and in the the name calling and the, just the lack of humility. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. Whoa, we've got to grow up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's definitely a level of maturity that we're all seeking, whether we know it or not, we've got to like get to the end. Sometimes that maturity comes out in the name calling somebody else. Like, well, I'm smarter than you, mm -hmm. you know? And that's like the maturity right. that we're claiming like, well, I'm smarter. So yeah, I'm, I'm more mature than you. Yeah. It's like, we know that we need to grow. And so some of us excuse that need by pointing mm -hmm. immaturity on somebody well, else. We're confused. I mean, a lot of this comes from the media mm -hmm. and the media is just Ooh. full of judgment, full of like, I know, you know, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. you somebody know? was saying, and I don't remember who, but somebody was saying, remember back when there was this one uh, newscaster who would just read the news and he wouldn't have an opinion Walter Cronkite yeah yeah right and That's and what the I, news is supposed to be and I was reading an article and I, re I read it out loud I was like emotional word emotional word emotional word like oh yeah you could highlight take all those emotional words and take them out and then there'd be the news oh yeah you know but At we should part do of that for news. our tribe <laughs> right we should be like taking the news and spinning it to just without Take all the, the emotion. Step. Well, the, and that's what really gets me right now because we are emotional creatures. Mm -hmm. We are meant to nurture or defend. That's in mm -hmm. our DNA yeah. to defend our tribe. Yeah. And so if our media is adding their bent on how they want us to receive mm -hmm. the news, mm -hmm then that, again, adds more polarity in our well, communities. Yeah. Well, totally. Right? The media kind of pits pits well, us against each even other. The you know, I, and I hate to bring up this, but the COVID vaccine. Mm. Like, if you look at the news, oh my gosh. it's just about how big that a was disaster this, it is. That and, was what and, the article was. In my was. opinion, I'm like, this is probably one of the best things that we're ever going to experience in science and medicine, like to shift us to a different a place different. Mm -hmm. and it's happening and it's happened rather quickly. We could, we could have fear about that or we could accept it. Mm -hmm. And, and just, but if you look at the media only, and I'm not suggesting either way, but yeah. if you look at the media, it's, it's spun one way that 
that states are in disasters getting it out. Yep. There's no oh, organization. Yeah. Nobody, you know, nobody can get it. There's not enough people have it yet. Get the shots in the arms and, and that spin on it. Mm-hmm. And, and it's not happening blame. fast enough. Yeah. Blame. Well, and, mm-hmm. well, and the, the media seems to love to be involved with fear mongering. Oh my God. What if they were celebrating? Uh, what if the media was celebrating the look, vaccine? Maybe that this. wouldn't be good either. Well, you know, maybe it should be neutral, right? Yeah. But yeah, I but think you could spin it the other way. The yeah, would right. Be really great, <laughs> right? You, you spin it the other way, and then you've got the other people saying, you know, that then we're just sheep because the media is making us. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's I a real think, rabbit hole. Yeah, the whole. But when we're talking works. about emotional intelligence, I think that that is part of the maturity of emotional intelligence is being able to witness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. emotional jargon yeah. And, yeah. and at this point and identify it yeah mm-hmm. yeah and and there i'm not going to be able to convince anyone who's doesn't want to and that's yeah. another part of it is just neutrality like if you want to uh, be involved and have your heart race and your yeah. adrenals pump yeah just because you read these yeah. words that are opinionated yeah <laughs> Well, that's um, for you. Yeah, there's something. There's there's wisdom to to regulating our news input mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. You know, to not overdose on it. Mm-hmm. That's, to be moderate mm-hmm. and to be careful with our mental diet. Yeah, that's part of sure. being an adult too. Yeah, and recognize. And I mean, you can't eat yeah. candy all day and evolve yeah, through right. your 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 belief systems, and and they should really or, or they could evolve. You know, I think about yeah. being in my 20s and reading Time magazine all the time and thinking, well, I've read it all. I mean, they always <laughs> talk about the same stuff and it's the same spin. Same thing with Huffington Post. I remember starting to read Huffington Post. And so I'm reading it, reading it. I go, yeah. just keep talking about the same stuff. Mm-hmm. I I hear it. I, I, you know, I tended to agree with it. So it made me comfortable. Uh-huh. Yeah. But I put it down and I got tired of it. Like mm-hmm. it just kind of got boring. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, thank goodness, though, there there is a lot of alternative media out there. And I just don't even look at any of it. (laughs) I like listening to podcasts. Yeah, podcasts, Mm -hmm. for sure. You know, that's media. Yeah. Interviewing real people. Yeah. Really getting to the bottom of issues rather than these sound Discussions. And they may not even agree. Yeah. Right. right. There are there there's open right. dialogue about mm-hmm. what's happening mm-hmm. yeah it's not scripted it We're still not being spins paid in me the back. though <laughs> you know i still i still choose certain podcasters yeah. oh yeah of course spin in a certain direction that's comfortable for me mm-hmm. yeah but at least we have more of a choice yeah, yeah. i mean yeah, and for a, a lot of people seem to be turning away from the mainstream media mm-hmm. yeah which and maybe uh, at some point it won't even exist right it's it's probably on in the decline yeah. for sure mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. part of our evolution is that we become our own media, probably. Right. You know, mm-hmm. that's what, you know, I remember looking at it when the, the, the protest was having happening in South Dakota with the pipeline. Mm. And the way we got our news on that was it's watching, Facebook. watching it live on Facebook. Mm-hmm. It's like, whoa, this is going on. You know, and the mass media wasn't even covering it. Really, they were just mm-hmm. barely touching, you know, a little spin here, a little dibble dabble here and there. <laughs> but in reality, it was like this big event. Yeah. And we were like watching it live. I remember we were, Jay and I oh were driving while Jay's like, we got to go there. All right. <laughs> I was freaking out. My yeah, heart was right. pumping it does out. Scary uh-huh. though. I mean, that's what happened with George Floyd with me too was, you know, I saw the video and I didn't actually watch it. I just saw yeah. what was happening. And then yeah. I... I was ready to be there, yeah. right? I was ready, I, but it's it's out of my wheelhouse. Well, and it's completely nothing, out of my wheelhouse. Yeah, the South Dakota or the the da- the pipeline. Yeah, the I remember it got to the point where a bunch of ex military guys they, they had a big GoFundMe. Yeah, where they raised like all this money, and there were like a thousand ex military guys there facing off. The police. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, this is huge. What's mm-hmm. going on? What's going to happen? You know, and I, I couldn't get the information from the media. Yeah. Because they were just like blacking it out. They were right. not talking. We don't want to talk they about the, it to be happening. No, they didn't. <laughs> so they didn't want to give it any juice. <laughs> but now I, we were able to, I mean, due to, you know, the, the new type of media that's coming right. out, we were able to follow it 
Mm-hmm. And nothing happened with right. it necessarily, but it was. But it this, creates an energy, though. That's oh yeah, that's the it part does. Of it that's it's kind true. Of a little daunting. Like, what if that that's important right there, right then? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we learn and grow from it. We don't continue to spread that energy everywhere. I mean, we we saw it spread to every city, and mm. and, and when when it happened in one spot with two two three people, right? Mm-hmm. It yeah. and it created a lot of I energy, think, and I think it's good, and I think it's it, not it's, good. I think it's both. I think it's Pluto. <laughs> I think it's Pluto. Return America's dealing with the karma that it attempted to throw in the closet. And there's all these skeletons in the closet Mm. spilling out. And we're like, no, get back in there. Get back in there. You know, and it's like, sorry, we can't. Right. We can't pretend that this country was not founded on violence anymore. Uh, Removing statues, you know, that's another thing. You know, we remove it. We we pretend it didn't happen and maybe we'll put it in a museum Mm-hmm. So that when you're walking through a park, it feels beautiful and great mm. and you, you, you don't recognize what has actually happened there. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. tying it back together. <laughs> this is what it's I fun. love about I these conversations is, is then in the end, it's like, okay, how do we weave all of that back together into mm-hmm. a pretty tapestry <laughs> and tie it off? And, um, what I keep on imagining is this stool and what are the legs of the stool? What is it that we need to have Mm -hmm. to hold us up so that we can have that emotional intelligence so that we can be mature and, and how can we model that in our presence? How can we be the sage of the Tao? And yeah, so that's, that's, yeah, by achieving humility and acceptance, right. and Sage not yourself. yeah, not engaging mm-hmm. in the in the name calling, and when we we witness it, yeah, calling it out, yeah. but not in a not in a hateful way. It's just like hey, yeah, what's I usually going just on? say I don't resonate with that, you know, unless it's somebody who really triggers me. In psychology, it's called mm-hmm. a process comment when you really just comment on the process. What's with the name calling? Yeah, why why are you doing that? You know, and people are like. Huh. Right. Uh, uh, I'm used to it. What if <laughs> Everybody really, does it. What if they really then think about why they do? Yeah, there's right. There's a reason why. Yeah. You know, there's a, well, there's a topic there. There's something that happened. Well, lots of things that happened. There's a habit a involved. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people are in that habit. Right. And we have to get into the habit. We don't have to. It'd be beneficial if, as more and more of us step into the habit of being more mature. Mm-hmm. which is not engaging in that and having humility and having acceptance, having compassion for everybody. Mm-hmm. I mean, understanding we, we, we're all flawed beings. We all have issues, you know, and to, to demonize a certain, a whole groups of people. It's just, that's very divisive and unproductive. And Absolutely. To, to send out that hatred is just, uh, like I said, it comes reflecting back right at you mm-hmm. from your own mind. Mm-hmm. You know, so if we want to feel good about ourselves, it's the only way yeah. it's to grow. Right. It's to accept it, it's to evolve. It's to, to be become, of service to others. Well, if you well, tie right. it back into the Tao. Mm-hmm. And collectively, it's, it's to get out of this violent culture that mm-hmm. we're in. I mean, because we can pretend like all the violence, you know, well, we're over it now as, our, as the war machine keeps rolling. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, that's the core of it. That's the beginning of it. Mm-hmm. It just comes back to us karmically, I believe. Mm-hmm. If we want, we want, want to stop the, the police violence, we want to stop this and that. We got to stop exporting violence. Right. Mm-hmm. Out to, you know, other anyway. cultures. Yemen. How many people talk about that? Not many. Let me tell you. But <laughs> I mean... So much for tying it together. <laughs> we tying it together, we're gonna, we're we're evolving into more peaceful people. I would yeah. believe eventually. No. Okay, so I want to talk about this idea. I'm sorry that's about that. Coming into my mind, and so we have detachment, humility, mm-hmm. and acceptance. <laughs> but then there's the self service. Is that is that included in those three, or is that a separate? Is that humility? I don't know. Self service. Or not self-service, in service. Selflessness. But there's a level of, of taking care of yourself. Right. 
Is that detachment? Detachment or acceptance? It's it's, it's, all. it's being compassionate. It's, it's being compassionate towards yourself. Yeah. So compassion would be. Well, it's all that. love. Yeah. It's it all is. just love. Thank you. It's yeah. True. It's mm-hmm. just loving everything, everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yourself first, and then loving others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And put your put your oxygen mask on first. Yep. That's yep. What, I, what I like to mm-hmm. remember. <laughs> yeah. Take your time. Yeah. I mean, I. Is a mom and 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 now a single mom, you know, it's it's making sure that I schedule that time mm-hmm. and, yeah. and that I make sure that it happens and then I can be a better mom. Mm-hmm. And, and you just Absolutely. vibrate higher when you're take care of you're yourself. rested <laughs> and you're yeah, you know, engaged in something that you love. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. Mm-hmm. So hope that uh was some food for thought. And Three hours later, uh, we'll we'll be, video again. No, we're done. <laughs> that yeah, was fun. I, I, yeah, it was fun. Mm-hmm. Till till our next uh, talk on the Dow mm-hmm. next month, and mm-hmm. yeah, this is going to air on WDRT on February seventh. I'm pretty sure. I think that's a Sunday. So big shout out to our Viroqua family. Yo, yo. And mm-hmm. um, all our listeners sending you love, sending you acceptance, mm-hmm. sending you a detached love of being in this human family together. Yeah. And um, human glad, tribe. <laughs> yeah. Glad to be walking on this earth with you. Mm-hmm. And. Yeah, be well. Yeah, thank you. Peace out. Mm -hmm. So this next song that we're going to play is very close to me. A call is Grimuki for timeless. It's the timeless one. Our soul is timeless. And for that reason, we can detach from the emotional ties in our life a little bit more because we're timeless our soul will go on we are here we have missions to do we have things to do we we are here to end the polarity so in whatever ways that that works for each of us the chance satsiriya call the great truth of timelessness so if you know this chant, sing along. And the English is a representation of the chant. So you can hear the way I interpret this uh, chant in the English version that we begin with. So enjoy. Feeling our body 
Relax to receive. 